Right. I click the links for Odyssey Beat you to support the channel. You can join the channel, become a member or support on uh, Coffee or Subscribe Star. Thanks for the recent Subscribe Star subscription or the various other links to see the other videos. So, crowdfunding comics, comics gate, and the <laughs> Image Union. So, I'm scrolling Twitter and I'm using the Dolphin Zero because I don't have an account, which is the only way to scroll through Twitter. Uh, otherwise, I want you to sign in, but Dolphin Zero, I don't know why it gets past that. Twitter is a massive, massive time sink, so you really want to be cognizant of the amount of time you spent on Twitter. It's like, oh, I just got done spending an hour, an hour arguing with somebody over something that ultimately doesn't matter. So, like, that makes us kind of both losers. Um, anyway, so um, it kind of really any time you spend on Twitter, unless you're using it to sell a business or something, uh, it's kind of just mindless dopamine uh, feedback loops. First of all, all the anti comics gate people. Let me scroll through this. That I just punched in comics gate into the uh, into the thing to see what, see some of the. It shows you some of the excitement that's coming up for comics gate, and then it also shows you the energy of the anti comics gate people, which is really weird because like comics gate is talking about their stuff, and anti comics gate people are talking about comics gate people, which is like maybe you guys should just do make a project do something make a make another deadbeats or something and you know talk about the stuff you like instead of the stuff you comics you want to tear down comics because they have the temerity to uh, leave the plantation um okay now all these anti comics people you, I, at this point you're better off just blocking them the ones who are insane SJWs, just block the top few hundred and you're going to have a much smoother experience there's no point in trying to talk to them. They don't want conversations. They want to have a quick um, insult and virtue signal, but they also kind of need your energy to feed upon. Arguing with anti gate accomplishes nothing. Comiskate at this point is big enough. It doesn't need that kind of attention. And I never would have said block a few years ago. anti gate is toxic. I mean, some of these people are mentally der deranged. They're they're focused on uh, they're focused on EBS and Malin and Myers and. And comics gate and anyone associated with comics gate to a point that is not healthy because like they're not involved in comics gate they don't buy the products they don't watch the shows they don't they're not involved in any any form other than just to be a naysayer it's like why are you spending your time focused on something that's so negative why don't you just go out and do something do something you enjoy if, you, if you're in the comics gate if you're in the comics sphere you're in the creative arts on in some way why don't you make something do something instead of like any time on twitter is Twitter's Twitter's really weird, and I'm I'm kind of glad I got kicked off. So there are a few things going on. Even after three years, Comicsgate is is still allegedly a grift, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because people make comics and then they sell comics and they deliver comics. Uh, that's about all it boils down to. Calling it a grift after three years is freaking bizarre. Comicsgate is its own community, but it's able to sustain itself. They say it's the same group of people who are selling back and forth, which I, it's like a child's understanding of the world. Maybe there are about loosely 100 creators and how many unique buyers are there out there? I don't know. And it doesn't matter because there's enough to fund hundreds of projects and grow itself every year. The anti comics gate whining on Twitter is weird. It's been three years. Comics gate is pretty well firmly entranced as a business model. For most people, comics are going to be a part-time gig, but there are a few people who are doing this full-time. Um, there's, you know, the top dozen people in comics game. It's people selling graphic novels. Uh, it's not an unheard of concept, and it's not rocket science. It's, I mean, there's a lot of small little details that go into making something, selling something, but, it, you know, it's not, it's not such a bizarre concept of people using a social media platform to sell something. It, it's like, I don't know why it, it seems to seems to bother the anti comics gate people um, very, very much. Uh, and it bothers SGWs. A lot of it is probably, I think, EVS triggers them. It used to be Myers triggered them, but he, he's no longer on Twitter, so he's kind of out of the firing line. Um, EVS is a very milquetoast-appearing normie, but he's got a sense of humor, which is uh, terrifies SGWs because... Uh, communists don't do humor. They don't do, because humor in some small way, it's, you know, the jester speaking before the court. Um, they don't like that. They don't like talking back to authority. And a lot, that's what a lot of humor is. It's, 
it's, you know, letting people know what's going on underneath the surface via uh, sarcasm and that kind of stuff. And, you know, he's definitely off the plantation. And to be fair, under the chubby surface, he is a little bit more based than he appears if you read him between the lines. He kind of appears terrified of going too far and jeopardizing anything to do with his finances. And, uh, you know, and the future unfolding um you know, cyber frog market is the potential for that is pretty big. So I get where he's coming from. Anyway, you can block all these people. They're just time wasters. Grow the comics gate audience, but anti comics gate is never going to be swayed. Just move on and leave them behind. Twitter is already a massive time sink. It is weird how much time people spend on Twitter and it's not productive time. It just doesn't do anything. It's just like cat ladies with a glass of wine and just on Twitter, spurging out while while TV plays in the background. It's like it accomplished. It's just a. It's just this peak Weimar bread and circuses of keeping the cattle distracted while the, the you know Nero is fiddling while Rome burns. Um, you don't need to t- waste your time kind of throwing pearls before us. I had this great argument. It's it does yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can convince them. They still hate you. You're not. I know you're arguing for a crowd, not really arguing for the person, but. I can't focus. There's kind of no point to any of it. There's not, there's not a whole lot of point to Twitter at all in in general. So here's the thing with mainstream comics. I don't need to look at the numbers. I'm looking at the stories. They're absolutely... I'm looking at the source material. And the, I still read those comics. Um, I like reading propaganda. I like reading cringe. They're absolutely horrible. Selling comics is not a magic money tree. You've got to sell stuff. And then you pay staff and expenses by selling stuff. But you can't force the customers to buy your stuff. You have to have something that they want. So if, if the mainstream says that things are fine, I don't really need to investigate um, the financial sheets to know that there's a problem with the narrative. The product is bad. Therefore, there's a very serious likelihood that somebody is lying. Somebody is fudging the numbers somewhere along the way. And there's arguments back and forth about Comicron and this kind of stuff. It's like, um, your estimates on sales are insane. There's no way they're accurate. Nobody believes that. They had to change their estimates because the Wu flu was and things went digital. And so if you look at something that was trending downwards, they had opened it 30,000 and before the Wu flu it was down to 22,000. It's like, well, it's going to continue down. And then you look at the uh, Comicron's digital estimates. It's like, it's it could be anywhere from 20 to 60,000. Um, yeah, I guess. Theoretically, that's true, but it's more likely to be at 18,000 because you just draw a tangent to the line or you, you map a mathematical function to the curve. And it's like you can, you can pass performance indicates um, future. Um, that's how comics go. They just they trend downward unless something happens. So anyway, that's um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of funny business going on with that. Um, and, you know, mostly they just need to keep the IPs uh, alive because they're, they're movie, um, you know, for the movies and that kind of stuff. So why are anti comics gate people wasting their time virtue signaling about how EVS is a Hugo Boss and, and comics gate's a hack group? They don't talk about what comics or movies they like. They talk about comics gate. There are countless pictures of comics gate people posing with all the comics they bought. They might be a little late, but Comics Gate's, you know, it's a new thing. It's not perfect. There's always going to be some kinks to work out. But they're mostly getting what they ordered. And, and yeah, stuff should not be late. Um, I've heard some people were defending late projects. Uh, that's copium. Just, there's, you can't, I mean, defending that is, that's a weird, that you would want to, that's, that's a weird hill to die on that project. Oh, it's perfectly normal for things to be late. Ah, oh. oh. That's not good. You shouldn't be... It's weird that you would say that. The thing is, you also know what you're getting into. If someone's got a history of late campaigns, you just don't buy from them, problem solved, or you can buy the stuff uh, on Amazon or eBay after it's sold. Um, that way, you know, you're going to get it in four days. And Tim Lamb and Doug, Douglas Ernst, and there's probably a few others who have on-time campaigns. So with the Image uh, Union news, <laughs> what, insane, what an insane, insane group of people... I'm on Team Accelerate with anything to do with wokeness. Image has got this union of the non-creators, uh, non-creative people who are trying to decide what gets published. Either you ignore them or you fire them or your business is going to tank. You know, it's only a matter of time. If you, it, you drain the engine of coolant and oil and you run it at red line, um, yeah, eventually it's going to seize. So the important stuff 
is who owns the IPs and then the art and writers um, with uh, creator owned, it's going to be the same people. They create the product, they own the thing. They're irreplaceable. Editors are a dime a dozen. Someone who does accounts receivable or advertising is very easily replaced. You can just call a friend in to, to do editing. It's like, I'm not that good at English. Well, you're probably better than the uh, the artist. Um, so you can just, just, you know, check it for mistakes, that kind of stuff. Anyway, so even artists and writers are to somewhat uh, replaceable, though very much less so, unless they own the property. Then they're the source. You can't fire. You can fire the editor, and you can move forward with any project you want. You can always find that, but you can't fire the creator. The project ends if you do that. If you fire uh, Douglas Ernst, then there is no soul finder. The Image Union is this group of non-talent saying uh, that they want to control or blacklist people from selling under Image. We're not even talking about right wingers. It's left wingers, but they failed some purity test. But they're going to end up blacklisting people who sell which pays their salaries. So I mean it's a very it's a very tight loop. It doesn't it doesn't take much to see that like oh we're we're blacklisting the people who are going to pay our salaries. So that cuts off our salaries from that future. Huh. I guess we've painted ourselves into a corner there. This is affecting our bottom line. Yeah, and that you got to pay union dues also. Hey, unions are awesome. Go for it. But um they're not, and they're not, they're not for every industry, especially not an industry like. Maybe you should look into the history of image before you get too excited about. Um, we just totally support this image union. We don't understand why more people aren't behind it. Well, because the history of image is on YouTube. You can watch those videos. You know, there's, maybe check out that out first. Anyway, they also want more diversity, which is you know, anyway. If you have a static or a shrinking industry, are you going to fire yourselves to hire some Irishmen to get that vibrant cultural Irish enrichment? It's as if a group of slow children were told to run a business or worse SJWs who want to hire fire the talent and hire other SJWs who can't sell. It's I mean, they, they do things that you know are, are going to hurt them, and they do them anyway, and then they pat themselves on the back for doing things that they know are, are going to run this business into the ground. Only because, you know, you've seen it a dozen times before. SJWs are parasites. They go into something, they destroy it, and they move on. And then they just do this cheer like idiots as if they've, well, you know, it didn't work out this time, but let's try it again another thousand times. Like, okay, it's... Why don't you just keep ruining things that people enjoy? We are. We are going to ruin things that you enjoy because that's what we do. We're SJWs. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys all next episode.